Hey guys, what up? So in this video tutorial series, what we're going to learn is uh, is uh, Express, and Express.js is a framework that's built on top of Node. We're going to get a fully working application, a website that's running in Express and Node. It's going to be easy. It's going to be relatively uh, basic, and we're probably going to make some mistakes along the way, so just excuse me if I make a mistake. Uh, I might swear. I might not. Hopefully I don't. Um, so the first things first is you need to actually download uh, Node.js onto your, your system. You can use this on Windows, Mac, or Linux. Just go to Google, type Node.js. It's going to go ahead and run an installer. And um, the installer is actually going to install a tool called NPM, which you need in order to be able to use Node. It's a package manager. It's a really cool tool that you'll end up getting uh, really familiar with. But uh, Node.js can just be downloaded and installed onto your machine. And um, once you have that, we need to go ahead and figure out where we're going to create our project. So in my case, I'm going to pull up a command prompt. And I like to put my projects inside the projects folder of my C drive. And the name of this project I'm going to be creating is called cause, K-O-Z. So if I want to make a project called cause, first thing I should do is make a directory which is going to hold the project. And I'm going to say make dir cause on Windows. And by doing that, I can then go into that cause directory, if I spelled it right and then I can uh, look at the contents and there's nothing in there so the first things first when you do a new node.js project you need to say um, npm init and that stands for initialize and what this is going to do is it's going to create a uh, json file which and json is just a javascript xml type of um, semantic which uh, it's basically just a data data storage thing uh, or a data visualization technique. I don't know. You you guys know what the hell it is, hopefully. Uh, that's a terrible explanation of what it is. But it stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's basically the web's alternative to XML so that you can uh, easily access data in a um, easy to transmit between you know uh, different customers that might be interfacing to each other with different systems. They can use a JSON standard um, which they used to use XML standards and you can still use XML or JSON it doesn't matter but basically it's just a standard of communicating data so um, that said let's go ahead and um, you want to use some sort of editor um, or some way that, that you're going to actually store and write your code I'm using Visual Studio which is free and what I like about it is that I can download and I can say open website and what I do is I, I just pick the folder that we just created and when I say open it on the right hand side it's going to show me all the files and everything for my project so that's why I like to do that I like to use an editor you don't have to but it's easy for me to be able to just double click and then see the contents of the file this config file was just created for us when we ran that init command and just so you know the reason for that is because um, you can have different versions of your app so if you go to distribute your app to somebody else you can say this is version 1.0 and maybe you release a version 1.2 and you'll be able to uh, differentiate you know with your customers different versions of your app and stuff like that so that's kinda just this is just a basic for every application that they think uh, a node application should have and your author here should be like you know your name so Chris Hawks and you can change all this stuff after the fact so it doesn't have to be um, you know changed when or uh, it doesn't have to be initialized or entered when you initialize it um, for the first time so you can always come back and update the values now that we have this package JSON file, we need to actually go back to our command prompt and we need to install Express.js. And just so you guys know, Express.js is a uh, mini framework and it's built on top of Node and it's actually very, very minimalistic. So if you've ever used something like Ruby on Rails or Django, this is much more minimalistic. It doesn't have any sort of authentication out of the box. It doesn't have any admin. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of things that you're going to need for a web application and that's that's actually on purpose it wants to be very very minimal and leave a lot of that implementation detail up to the to the end user so what that means for you is that this thing's not going to hold your hand but at the same time it's not going to get in your way and tell you you have to do things this way and that way it pretty much leaves up uh, leaves a lot to you and what and, and the downside is that you have to learn a little bit more about how things work up front. But the positive is that once you learn and you do a lot of this basic stuff that like maybe a Django or a Ruby on Rails does for you out of the box, your learning experience is going to be so much more valuable with something like this because once you you know you spend that you front load that that time and that effort to learn, and when you have to go to adapt it or explain why something doesn't work or or whatever, then 
um, you're going to know so much more about your application and just the inner working. So it's, you're going to be much more intimate with it. Um, so that, that said, let's go over to install and express. And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to use the NPM, NPM tool, which is installed with Node. So you just have to say NPM. And we're going to say install, and then we're going to say express, and then hyphen, hyphen, save. And the reason why we use hyphen, hyphen, save is because it's going to install express locally um, into our project here. And then it's also going to add express to our uh, JSON file, that JSON config file I was just showing you guys. So if I went ahead and I reload this uh, this file over here, you're going to see it now has a dependencies and it adds express as well as the express version that we're using. So that way when you go to distribute this application and you run an NPM install on it, it's actually going to install all the dependencies that the application needs. So that's why the hyphen hyphen express is, uh, or I'm sorry, save is important when you go to install something. Now another thing to get familiar with is that when we go to our folder, um, you're going to see that the cause directory now has this node module. So all your node modules um, that express needs are going to be inside of here. And then there's also going to be um, uh, any sort of additional modules that we install are going to be put in here as well. So a lot of this stuff actually is just required by Express. All right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and create our first uh, page for our application. Um, what I typically do is just do an app.js file. So I like to say app.js. And this is like your main file. So this can be considered like your settings file if you've ever used uh, Django or like your web config if you've done ASP.NET. And if you haven't done any of that shit, then don't worry about it. This can just be your dashboard, basically. First things first is we need to say uh, variable express equal require express. And what this does is Node has this require thing where it actually looks for the, uh, there's a cache that's created for all the modules that your application uses. And if, if your module is being requested for the first time, it's not going to exist inside the cache. So Node is going to find the module by looking uh, at the main directory it's going to look for an express. It's not going to find it, so then it's going to fall back to the NPM uh, the modules that I was just showing you, these uh, node modules, and it's going to look inside this folder. Um, or um, if you, you can give it an ex uh, explicit location to where the module is located, and we'll show an example of that in a moment. But for right now, by saying require express, it's going to look for express in your main root directory. It's not going to find it, and it'll fall back into the node modules, and it'll find it in there. So Node um, handles a lot of that, that for us. So now the next thing we want to do is we want to create an app. And app is actually going to say equal express. So we're actually making use of that express module that we've just imported. Now we're going to create a routes because everything needs a routes. And this is where we're actually going to give it an explicit path to where it's going to be able to find the module that we're talking about. So we're going to have a module and a routes folder, and it's going to be called index. Now that doesn't exist yet, so let's go ahead and create the routes folder inside of our main root directory, and we're going to call that routes. Now inside of there, we're going to create an index.js file. So right click, um, if you're using my editor, if not, you can use whatever you want. And um, we're going to go ahead and create this index.js file. So let's go back over to the app.js. All right, so now we have those uh, in there. Next thing we want to do is we want to go down here and we want to make use of the route. So we're going to say app.use. And then we're going to, I don't know why the hell it does that. We're going to app.use and then we're going to give it just a backslash. Or really it's a forward slash. And we're going to say routes, which is the, the module that we've just created. So we're going to reference it here. We're basically just saying, hey, use this routes module, which there's nothing there yet. It's just an empty file, but we're going to add to that in a moment. Next thing we want to do is we want to call app.set, and we're going to be setting the port um, that our application is going to be using. So the first argument, we say port. And then um, one of the, I'm not going to explain this part here. Just type this in for right now. Mother F. I don't know why that keeps doing that. Anyway, I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to copy and paste because my editor is being stupid. We're going to tell this thing to listen on port 9080. And the reason why is that you can put whatever port you want, but I have several applications, and that's just the port that I decided that I want the local host application to listen to. So uh, when we go to run this application, Node has to know uh, what port to listen to. Now we're going to make use of this port that we've set by saying 
Uh, we're going to create this. Let me zoom out. And you want to just type this uh, verbatim. What we're doing is we're creating a server object and we're saying listen on port and the port is set here so 9080 and then print this to the line so that way when we start the application this will get printed and we'll know that it, that it did something that the application should be should be started so now we could actually run our application by going to our folder and saying node app.js and right now it's saying router.use requires middleware but got an object see there's nothing there so uh, what we need to do is um, go ahead and fix that so let's go over to this uh, index folder in our routes and we're going to add some stuff to it. So first things first is we need to, just like in the last file, we need to make use of the express. So we're going to say variable express, require express. And then the second line, we're going to create a router object and we're going to use a built-in router feature of express. So we're going to say variable router equals express router. Now we're going to go ahead and tell it to listen to just the forward slash which is just basically your domain name so if you have you know, newmovies.com th this would be newmovies.com be your home page or google.com or whatever it is and we're just going to print out this straight you know html test this application now finally in order for a module to work you need to actually export it and this is where the error message came along because we had pointed to a file that actually doesn't um, do this module that exports which it actually needs to do so what we're doing is we're saying export router so we create a router we're setting our a router get method and then we're also exporting it uh, so it can be required so now this isn't going to blow up when we try to run the app so now you can see it's app.start it doesn't uh, blow up if we go ahead and we go over to our local host address by saying 127 and then give it a colon right here and then the name um, or the uh, port number that you wanted to listen to so when we go here we should be able to see the test this application message being displayed alright guys so we're, we're golden there so now the next thing we're going to do in the next video is we're going to set up um, how to listen to uh, CSS files and stuff like that so uh, we'll get into that in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe. Thank you. Bye.